Today, let's talk about doing right in the day of distress. I'm going to read you from Obadiah, verses 12, 13, and 14. Now look, Obadiah is a short book. There's only one chapter in the entire book, so there's no point in giving a chapter number. We're just talking about verses 12, 13, and 14 in the prophecy of Obadiah. This is what we read. But you should not have gazed on the day of your brother in the day of his captivity, nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of distress, nor should you have entered the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Indeed, you should not have gazed on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity." You should not have stood at the crossroads to cut off those among them who escaped, nor should you have delivered up those among them who remained in the day of distress. The book of Obadiah is certainly one of the more hidden books of the Bible. Most Bible readers know nothing of its message and might have a bit of trouble making sense of it all. The answer, as almost always is the case, is to understand the context of the book. Obadiah's prophecy is unique because it doesn't deal with Judah or Israel much at all. His focus is on the sin of Edom and the judgment coming upon the Edomites. Now, the Edomites are the people descended from Esau, the son of Isaac and Rebekah, and the brother of Jacob. Esau was nicknamed Edom, which means red, probably because he had red hair. The nations of Edom and Israel existed side by side through many centuries, sometimes in cooperation and sometimes in competition. Obadiah wrote a wrote of a time when Judah was attacked and the Edomites did nothing to help them. Worse yet, they rejoiced in the calamity that came upon Israel, and they profited themselves by it. Now, this was a bad sin, but Obadiah says that it was worse because of the long family link between Israel and Edom. They were really brother nations, because the family lines of both Israel and Edom go back to a common ancestor, Isaac and, of course, Abraham. Esau, or Edom, was the brother of Jacob, that is, Israel. This made Edom's sin against Israel all the worse. Some sins become worse depending on whom we sin against. It's a sin to treat someone else badly. It's worse to treat a brother or sister in Jesus badly. It's a sin to speak harshly to anyone. It's worse to speak harshly to your husband or your wife. But the real problem was that when the enemies attacked Judah, Edom did nothing. They stood by and cheered for Judah's misery. Sometimes doing nothing is a great sin. Numbers chapter 32, verse 23, speaks of the sin that will find you out, and it's the sin of doing nothing. Yet Edom actually did worse than nothing. They rejoiced over another's misfortune and suffering, and they used it as an occasion to exalt themselves. Obadiah says, nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Their sin became worse Edom's sin started with doing nothing, then it progressed to pride over Judah's distress. Soon, they took advantage of their brother Judah's misfortune and laid hand on their substance. The final progression of Edom's sin was worst of all. They joined in the attack against vulnerable Judah. It says, you should not have stood at the crossroads to cut off those among them who escaped. When they encountered people from Judah fleeing southward from the attacking army, they killed them, cut off, or gave them over to the enemy as prisoners, delivering up those among them who remained. Obadiah repeats it like a chorus to a tragic song. In the day of this captivity, in the day of distress, in the day of captivity. All in all, Edom treated God's people terribly when distress and calamity came upon them. For all this, God's judgment was coming upon them. 
First, they did nothing. Then they rejoiced in the distress and calamity of their neighbor, brother, nation. Then they took advantage of their vulnerable state. Then they joined in the violence against God's people. Now, friend, let me ask you a question. Are we guilty of the same or worse when we see others in distress or calamity? Do we take advantage of or profit from calamity in the life of others? If so, God sees it as sin and he must deal with it in our life. So invite him to do it and to do it right in the day of someone else's distress. That's what you and I need to be. People who will be good to others in the day of their calamity. God helping us will do that in the power of Jesus and will do it today.